So here we have a sheep eye, and uh, we always want to look at the orientation first. And this one is actually fairly obvious because you can actually imagine that the sheep is looking at you. And so here we have the front, the anterior part of the, of the eyeball. And then we're going to look at the posterior part as well. There are several external structures that we can identify. The eye has three main layers, or tunics, we sometimes call them. And the outermost layer that forms the whites of our eye is called the sclera, and it's a, it's a fibrous protective structure. And it's called the sclera, and you can see the whites of the eye here, the sclera. At the very anterior portion of the eye, though, we need to turn that sclera from white, which would reflect light, to something transparent, which would be the cornea. So here you can see the cornea. Because this sheep is clearly dead, and preserved, the cornea has actually this sort of cloudy structure, but normally it would be completely transparent. So you can see the cornea here, the anterior part of the fibrous connective tissue, the sclera. We know that the eye can look up, down, left, and right in the orbit of the eye, and so we have these muscles called extrinsic muscles of the eye. To separate them from the intrinsic muscles of the eye, which enable us our pupillary reflexes, we sometimes call them pupillary dilator and pupillary constrictor muscles. So here you can see an extrinsic muscles of the eye, extrinsic muscle of the eye, and there are three pairs of extrinsic muscles of the eye, enabling the eye to look up down, left, right, and also some oblique, so kind of all the way around. At the very back of the eye, before we do our dissection, we have the beginning of our optic nerve. So you can see the optic nerve here. It's a little hard to see, but you can see it's this very round white matter structure, and it's the nerve that's carrying sensory information from the eye towards the brain, right, through the optic nerve, the optic chiasm, and the optic tract. So you can see the optic nerve. And you would always find this optic nerve at the very posterior part of the eyeball. And it would actually go through the optic foramen in the sphenoid bone of the skull. So here you can see, again, the sclera and the cornea. You can see an extrinsic muscle of the eye. And then all the way to the back, you can see the optic nerve. And we're going to go ahead and cut open the eyeball. This might take me a couple of minutes because it's quite tough. The sclera is very fibrous and protective of the eye, so it's hard to get through. And just to give you fair warning that there's a fluid in the eye, both an aqueous fluid as well as a vitreous fluid, as well as the preservative that this eye has been sitting in. So there could be a little bit of um, fluid leaking out or squirting out as I do my dissection. So I'm just going to cut right along the margin between the cornea and the sclera so that we can see the underlying structures of the eye, like the iris and the lens. So it takes a little bit of effort, and I'm trying not to squeeze too hard because I don't want to mash up the rest. You can see that fluid just oozed out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the way around. And again, you can see a lot of that fluid leaking out now that I've punctured the eye. Here you can see again the cornea, and then if I just remove the cornea, and you can see again it's slightly miscolored because uh, this sheep has been dead for, for quite a while. And now that we see the, the cornea is removed, we can see the colored part of the eye called the iris. And this iris is slightly golden brown. You can see that here. And there's a hole right in the center of the iris called the pupil. So the pupil actually is an absence of a structure. It's a hole surrounded by the iris, which contains muscles that enable the iris actually to constrict and dilate, making the pupil smaller or larger when we talk about pupillary reflexes. We're really talking about the muscles of the iris contracting and relaxing because the pupil itself is just a hole. Right inside the pupil, just behind the pupil, is a, a hard structure called the lens, which helps focus light on the sensory portion of the eye called the retina, which we're going to look at now. 
So we saw that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut down about a half an inch or so and then cut all the way around the sclera so I can see the inside of the eye. This won't take me quite as long. So here we have the uh, pupil and the iris and part of the sclera and I just removed it. Here again you can see it just separated out. Again the iris and the pupil. And then we can see inside and we can see the lens, this, this kind of white structure here, the lens that is suspended in this fluid, this jelly-like fluid here called the vitreous humor or the vitreous fluid. And the vitreous is important because it helps hold the retina in place. And then you, again, you can see the, the lens which sort of nestles in it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just tip over the eye and gently, hopefully, remove the vitreous, which is not normally quite this, um, this hard, but again, because this, this, uh, this sheep is dead, the vitreous is sort of solidified. So and you can see again the, um, the lens over there. So I'm just going to put that to the side so that we can see the structures on the inside of the, of the eye. And remember that the, the eye has three layers or tunics. We had the outer fibrous layer, the connective tissue layer that's called the sclera. It's going to help protect. And then we have this inner sensory, the innermost sensory layer called the retina. And you can see this retina is this slightly yellowish membrane looking structure. And you can see it here. And this is the retina and this contains the photoreceptors of the eye that receive light information and there's cells of the retina that actually get together at the back of the eye at a structure called the optic disc that then forms the optic nerve. So again you can see the retina or the nervous layer of the eye, the sensory layer of the eye. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of carefully scrape up the retina so I can see some of the underlying structures as well. And you can see that the, the retina is anchored right here and that's a structure called the optic disc and that helps hold the retina in place as well as is the starting point for the optic nerve. And you can remember we saw the optic nerve right there. So there's that optic nerve right between my thumbs and you can see that that is identical to the other side of the location of the optic disc. The optic disc you can actually um, visualize with, uh, it's also sometimes called the blind spot because there's no photoreceptors there. So when light information hits that space, there's no photoreceptors to respond. So sometimes we call that the blind spot. The middle layer between, uh, between the retina, which I've scraped over and just sort of left over here on the side, and the sclera is called the choroid the choroid. And the choroid is a vascular layer, so it's a nutrition layer. It provides nutri nutritive support to the structures of the eye and the choroid. And you can see that the choroid here is very dark, very black in fact, because it, the choroid layer also has a pigment that makes it appear very, very dark or black to help absorb extraneous light that's coming in because you want light to come in and only activate the photoreceptors, not bounce around like it's a hall of mirrors, which would make it very confusing to figure out where that light was coming from in the environment. Now, because the sheep is, is a nocturnal animal, it also has the structure that humans wouldn't have. And it's this beautiful yellowish, bluish, greenish color, writing kind of right down the bin line. And this is called the tapetum lucidum the tapetum lucidum. And it's a structure that actually does help reflect light because in low light environments where this sheep might be uh, living in the, in the wild, it's better to know that there's a lion out there than whether or not we can read a book and have good visual, uh, visual acuity, good uh, sharp vision. It's better to know something's there than being able to say read a, read a sign. But humans don't have a tapetum lucidum 
and so therefore they tend to be diurnal, meaning they're in the daylight where there's lots of light. So again, and the tapetum lucem is just a specialized structure of that choroid. So you can see the majority of the choroid is this black structure, and then this specialized area of it is called the tapetum lucidum. So the three layers of the eye, you have the sclera, the outer connective pr protective part, the middle vascular layer, the choroid, and then the innermost sensory layer, the retina.